all those things are all together in the same issues of should we spend more energy on facing the end of the month or the end of the world. This is a difficult issue. How much should we do for the future? Okay, there are many people who believe that uh, the future will be brighter today, that uh, we will have uh, more wealth, that we will produce more goods and services, and therefore future generations will be better off than us. So when we decide to invest for those generations, in fact, we increase intergenerational inequalities. And that's one bad aspect of sacrificing the present for the future. We ask the poor, the current generation, to sacrifice consumption for the benefits of people who potentially will be well, much wealthier than us. And therefore, that, that, that would be compatible with uh, the common good only if the benefits of those investments are large enough for the future generation. The problem with this general way of thinking of economics comes from the fact that we make the assumption that we will be more prosperous in the future, that we live in a growing economy. It has been true for the last two centuries, but it's not necessarily true for the future. So one of the big things I did in my research over the last few years is to examine the role of risk and uncertainty. And, and so that's why in our society, we penalize investment that generate benefits for the very distant future. And in the real world, we speak about discounting. We discount the future, we penalize the future just because it's a future. And the problem is how, by how much we should or we do discount the future is the critical question I'm examining in my research. One application of this technology is in terms of uh, when we apply that to climate change. Climate change is we, must, we are asked to make sacrifice in the short run because the energy transition will be costly. Uh, for the benefits of reducing emission, and the reduced emission will, have, will be mostly beneficial for the for future generation, generation who will live on this planet in, in 50 years, one century or two centuries from now. The question is how much should we be ready to give up in terms of purchasing power today to reduce emission by one ton, to simplify. When you eliminate one ton of, of CO2 emission today, you reduce damages by something like 1,000 or 2,000 euros in 50 or 100 years from now. And so the question is, what would be the uh, energy transition efforts that we should be ready to give up, to do in order to eliminate those future damages? This debate can be summarized into uh, the, the, the price of carbon. Typically, we think that should be something between 50 euros per ton of CO2 and 200 euros per, per ton of CO2. I believe it should be something one, like 160 euros. That's one way of translating your question, which is, do we do enough for the future into a number? I mean, a number like a discount rate or like a level of the price of carbon. And so when I say 160 euros per ton of CO2, I mean, we should do all efforts of reducing emissions that cost us less than 160 euros. If we, if we think we do, that's not enough, we should increase the price of carbon. All those things are all together in the same issues of should we spend uh, more energy on facing the end of the month or the end of the world. When one difficulty with this whole issue is whether people will accept to, to make those sacrifices and whether the politician will be ready to bear the political cost of uh, imposing those sacrifices to the population. Anyway, this is the kind of thing I've been studying with colleagues here over the last five years with the assistance and, and financial support of the Agence Nationale de la Recherche, which I, I thank for their, uh, for their support. Mm -hmm.